And therefore, all the Anbiya are in Salat and Salam are such a thing. But the reason this very special quality was mentioned for Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam was because he was aware on a very special level of that Siddiq. As I said, these are qualities and these are levels. And then as a Siddiq is a quality, then it has many levels within this quality. Just like Mu'mins, all of our, our believers and Mu'mineen, but among believers, there are sinners like me, there are general people like others, there are people, great people like the scholars of Islam, and there are people like those Mufassirin, Muhaddisin, and Aimma, uh, the great Aimma of the Deen, and there are people like Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een. We all are, we can say about ourselves that these are all believers, but then these are different levels within the people of Iman. Same thing. Once the person get to the level of a siddiq then there are levels of a siddiqeen Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam was on a very high level of siddiq and therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this as a very special quality of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam which does not in any way means other anbiya alayhi salatu was salam were not siddiqeen but it simply means he was on a very high level of being a Siddiq. And then I mentioned some of the levels of Siddiqeen so that we can understand these that these are levels of a Siddiqeen. Same thing now, the reason I mentioned this as a reminder, so we can understand that the other qualities that we that will be mentioned for these other Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam, it does not mean that the quality that is mentioned for Ismail alayhi salam, other Anbiya alayhi salam did not have it. The quality that is mentioned for Ishaq alayhi salam, other Anbiya did not have it. Quality is mentioned for uh, Idris alayhi salam, other Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam did not have it. It does not mean that. It all means that it simply means that these Anbiya for whom these qualities are mentioned, they were on a very high level of this status and this quality. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu was salam وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ مُوسَى And mention in the book the story of Musa alayhi salatu was salam إِنَّهُ كَانَ مُخْلَصَى Now this is the quality that is mentioned of Musa alayhi salatu was salam إِنَّهُ كَانَ مُخْلَصَى He was the chosen one. We know all the Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam are chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah chose all of these Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam None of them was rejected billah. They all are the chosen one. But out of these ones, Musa alayhi salatu was salam had a very special status amongst the chosen one. So, for example, there are 15, 20 students in a class. All of these are students of the teacher. But one or two maybe very close to the teacher which means benefiting a lot from the teacher so we say these are the real students of this teacher okay, I think one else. there's a Alexis is blocking the car Wait, just anybody driving a maroon Alexis please move so I can, he's the left. and also there is some brother they park and ride they think about themselves only so they don't even get, leave in a room for the other brother to park their car in the proper way the last Roll at the beginning when you get in into the parking lot. I don't know why you can why you barking in there while you have side. Can you bark on this side? Okay, so you can leave, leave room for your other brother. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is talking about Musa alayhi salatu was salam. Inna hu kana mukhlasa. He was the chosen one by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As I said, all Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam are chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why Musa alayhi salam is, is called mukhlas? First thing, remember the word mukhlas, there are two words in Quran. One is with the kisra on the lamb, mukhlas. Mukhlas, we are insha'Allah or are mukhlasin or trying to be mukhlasin. This is our level, that we either got to the level of mukhlas or we are trying to get to the level of mukhlas 
And mukhlis means a person who have ikhlas, sincerity in his ibadah and worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is mukhlis. That a person who has sincerity in his ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is mukhlis we call ikhlas. But Anbiya alayhi wa salatu wasalam, they are on a much higher level than that. So there is no question about them being mukhlas. They are mukhlas, which means chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then they have different levels of that closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from this angle, from this quality. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, is only is one of the prophets that we know two very unique things about him number one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked to him talked to him directly of course it happened to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Quran or ahadith do not state about any other prophet that Allah talked to them the way he talked to Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. One very special quality that make him the chosen one and a very high status amongst the chosen one. Number two, most of the Abiyya alayhi salatu wasalam, their, their helpers were a person from the Ummah, from one of their followers. For Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, Allah chose his helper to be also a prophet. And that was his brother, Harun alayhi salatu wasalam. <coughs> Harun alayhi salam was the helper of Musa alayhi salam. But he was a prophet himself. And that ayah is coming next. I will explain that in more detail at that time. But these are two very special qualities that we know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed Musa alayhi salatu wasalam with. So he's calling him mukhlas. As I said, all the Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam were mukhlas. They were chosen. But Musa alayhi salam was on a very special quality and very special level of being a mukhlas also. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam in Quran Kareem and about this quality of being mukhlas says in Quran we chose them with one very unique quality. We chose them with one very extremely unique quality. And what quality was that? That was the remembering of the house. Which house? Of the Akhirah. So this was a very special quality Anbiya alayhim salatu was salam given for which Allah says akhlasnahum we chose them for that quality. So they were mukhlas because of that very unique quality amongst them. Now amongst the followers those who have more of this quality of remembering akhirah will be closer to Anbiya alayhim salatu was salam in being mukhlas. The more we run away from Akhirah and keep our mind, our time, our energies, everything used and busy for this dunya, this is how far we are getting from those who are mukhlas. So see the word mukhlas here? The reason Allah is mentioning it to tell us that how can we benefit from these qualities? <coughs> And it's telling us, أَخْلَصْنَاهُمْ بِخَالِصَةً We chose them with one very unique quality. They were chosen, they were mukhlas. One of the reasons was because of this very unique quality that they had. Anbiya alayhim salatu was salam never forget in their lives, they never forget of akhirah. Whatever they perform in their lives, it's done. With that in mind, that one day I will be facing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are followers of Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam 
amongst the scholars of Islam, we find some of them who say that I never forgot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in my life except for one time or two times. So if this is the situation of the followers in Ummah, then imagine what will be the situation of Anbiya alayhimu salatu wasalam. And Allah is telling us that this was a very unique quality. Musa alayhi salam is mukhlas, is on, very, on a very high level of being mukhlas. All the Anbiya alayhimu salatu wasalam are mukhlas. And we can be closer to these mukhlasin, not mukhlasin. Remember, now we are getting higher than mukhlasin. A person will get on a higher level than mukhlas when he gets to mukhlas. And Anbiya Ali Musalatu Wasalam are Mukhlasin, Musa Ali Salam on a very high level of Al Mukhlasin, and we can get just closer to them the more we have remembrance of Akhirah. The more the person is involved in his dunya, our hearts are attached to dunya, the further we are getting away in, we are from Mukhlasin, from those people who were chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The more we remember the Akhirah. وَمَنْ أَرَادَ الْآخِرَةَ وَسَعَى لَهَا سَعِيهَا وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ فَأُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ سَعِيهُمْ مَشْكُورًا Those who would like the Akhirah, there are people who like dunya. Those who like the Akhirah. وَسَعَى لَهَا سَعِيهَا وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ And they work hard for it with Iman. Their effort will be honored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be valued and paid back by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is mukhlasin. We can be closer to mukhlasin by having that remembrance of the akhirah in our minds and keeping our minds busy in the remembrance of akhirah and practicing things in our lives that will allow us to keep our life busy for the work of akhirah. So this is a very unique quality that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned of Musa alayhi salatu wa salam. Innahu kana mukhlasa. Wa kana rasoolan nabiyya. And he was a prophet, he was a nabi. He was a messenger and he was a prophet. Of course, to be closer to Anbiya alayhi salatu wa salam, it's a great quality for the followers. And we can be closer to them by following their steps and their teachings. How can we now in this ummah, how can we be closer to Musa alayhi salam, to Isa alayhi salam, to Idris alayhi salam, to Ismail alayhi salam? We won't have to follow those Anbi alayhi salatu salam directly. We can follow Muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and that will get us closer to all Anbi alayhi salatu salam. وَنَادَيْنَاهُ مِنْ جَانِبِ الطُّورِ الْأَيْمَنِ وَقَرَّبْنَاهُ نَجِيَّةً And we called him from the right side of Mount Tur. And we drew him close to us to talk to him in secret. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning the very unique quality of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, for which he's calling him mukhlas, that I called him to the mountain of Tur. And when was that? That was when he was going from Madian to Egypt. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, as we know, that he left Egypt after he punched the person and the person died, he went to Madian, where he met Sayyidina Shu'aib alayhi salatu was salam. He got married to the daughter of Shu'aib alayhi salatu was salam. After approximately 10 years, he was going back to Misr, to Egypt. And Allah subhanahu on his way, he thought that he lost his way. So he's looking for some guide, someone to give him some guidance, to show him his, to, uh, give him the direction. And there he sees some light. He says, let me go to that light. There is fire over there. There must be some people there who put on that fire. He went over there to see who is there by the fire to get some help. And there he was called by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was not really a fire. It was the nur. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked to him at that time, وَقَرَّبْنَاهُ najiya. We drew him close to us to talk to him. And Naji is the person that you talk to him in secret. So we talk to him in secret, which means a very showing a very special type of relationship there and very special 
uh, status that Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu was salam is getting in closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَوَهَبْنَا لَهُ مِنْ رَحْمَتِنَا Now Allah says on the right side of the mountain Tur. Of course mountain does not have right side or left side. It all depends on where you are standing. And here we know that he's going from Madian to Egypt. And on his way as mountain was, when he's facing the mountain, he was called from the right side of the mountain according to the hand of Musa alayhi salatu was salam. So according to where Musa alayhi salatu was salam is standing, which means the direction of the mountain which is towards Egypt. <coughs> Finally he got the Nabuwa and he went and he was sent to Fir'aun. So at that time Musa alayhi salatu was salam requested Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, waj'alli waziran min ahli. Give me a helper from my family. <coughs> Harun Akhi, and he's requesting, if it would be Harun, my brother, it would be great. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted the dua of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu was salam. And here he says, وَوَهَبْنَا لَهُ مِنْ رَحْمَتِنَا أَخَاهُ هَارُونَ نَبِيًّا And we blessed him with his brother Harun as a helper and who was a prophet. His request was, وَجْعَلْ وَزِيرًا مِّنْ أَهْلِي Give me a helper from my family members. So that was Sayyidina Harun alayhi salatu was salam. Now, all the tafasir agree. Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een have narrated that Sayyidina Harun alayhi salatu was salam was a year older than Musa alayhi salatu was salam. So Harun alayhi salatu was salam is the older brother of Musa alayhi salatu was salam. Musa alayhi salam is younger than Harun alayhi salam. Number two, we know that Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam are totally and solely selected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No human beings have any say into that. So now what does this mean when we say Harun alayhi salam was chosen to be the helper of Musa alayhi salatu was salam? Does it mean because of this dua of Musa alayhi salatu was salam, Harun alayhi salam got the prophethood? No. It does not mean that. It simply means <laughs> Harun alayhi salatu was salam, he's older, he's already a prophet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending Jibreel alayhi salam to Harun alayhi salam. And Harun alayhi salam already got the prophethood. Remember the difference is only one year. Musa alayhi salatu wa salam have not met his brother for how long? We just said for 10 years. So in the past 10 years these brothers have not seen each other. Musa alayhi salatu was salam, of course, before he left Egypt, he knows the qualities of his brother. So he's making dua for his brother Harun to be his helper. Harun alayhi salam is already a prophet. Is not receiving the prophethood because of the request of Musa alayhi salatu was salam. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala approved the dua of Musa alayhi salatu was salam and assigned Harun alayhi salatu was salam who was already a prophet to be the helper of Musa alayhi salatu was salam. <coughs> so now Harun alayhi salam is not preaching anything that he receives. Allah is not sending direct orders to Harun alayhi salatu was salam. <coughs> yes, Jibreel alayhi salam must be coming to him with directions, with orders, but everything is only in support of what Musa alayhi salatu was salam is doing. Which is a very unique thing amongst the Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam. That for a prophet to be a helper of another prophet and for a prophet to have his helper who would be a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So both of them they talk to Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam. Both of them receive messages from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And both of them are messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of them is given the responsibility of conveying the message to the ummah and the other is assigned as a helper to him. وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ Ismail And mention in the book the story of Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salatu was salam. إِنَّهُ كَانَ صَادِقَ الْوَعْدِ وَكَانَ رَسُولًا نَبِيًّا Indeed, Ismail alayhi salatu was salam was true to his promises and he was a messenger, a prophet. Now, Again, I would remind the very same thing. All Anbiya alayhim salatu was salam are sadiq al wahd All the Anbiya alayhim salatu was salam, they fulfill their promises. But Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salatu was salam was on a very special level of sidq al wahd He had a very special degree and level of being truthful in his promises. To understand that, we may take the story of Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salatu was salam that is mentioned in Quran al kareem when his father Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam asked him, Inni ara fil manami anni azbahuk. A young boy. He is not yet to the age where he would be called responsible for his deeds and his actions and his words. He's too young at that time. And Ibrahim, uh, Quran says, how young was he? He was at the age that now he can walk with his father. So he's not too old. He's a young boy. At that time, Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam saw a dream. Then he's slaughtering his son Ismail alayhi salatu was salam. So he said to him, Ya Bunaya inni ara fil manami anni al bahuka fanzur madha tara. Oh my son, I have been seeing in my dream that I'm slaughtering you. So what's your opinion about this? What was the reply? Ya abatif al matu umar. Oh my father, dad, do whatever you have been ordered to do. Satajiduni insha'Allah min as sabirin Insha'Allah, you will see me practicing patience. Now when he promised that he will have sabr, he did not give it up later on. This was a promise. Now, of course, a lot of time we make big promises to ourselves, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to people, and later on we think, no, I, mean, I can't really do this. It was too major of a promise and too big of a thing for me to do. I can't do it. How many times our parents would ask us to do something, will say, yeah, yes, don't worry about it. I'll do it. And then half the, half the way, we say, you know, I really can't do this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us Ismail alayhi salam being sadiq al wahd That see, at that age, and this type of promise, that you will be cutting my throat and I will be having sabr. I will not complain. I will not hesitate. I would not do anything that will show that I'm impatient and I'm not willing to go for it. I will show everything. Although my heart, of course, no human being will like to be slaughtered, but still I will have sabr. This is what sabr means, that my feelings will be against it, but I will control myself. Someone dies, God forbid, someone dies in the family. We say the person is having sabr doesn't mean he has no hard feelings. Yes, he is, there is a lot of things going through his mind. He's controlling himself. This is sabr. You lost something. It's not that you don't feel bad about it. You feel bad, but you have sabr. You don't say a single word about that situation. So Ismail alayhi salatu was salam. He knew what will happen that his father is going to cut his throat. He's going to slaughter him. He is not even mentioning it to his mother, okay, let me just give a hug to my mother before I leave, say goodbye to her, she raised me in this desert and now she will be all by herself, she will not have anyone around her, you will leave and I will be killed. But no, sober, total sober, not a single word about that situation. Dad, you want? Now since you have been 
asked to do this by Allah, just take me and do it. And you will have you will see me having a lot of sabr. And the way he practiced his sabr, his father laid him down. Imam Ibn Kathir rahimahullah narrates that when he laid him down, he said, Dad, lay me down upside down. Keep my forehead on the ground. In Surah Al-Safat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have an indication to this point. When both submitted themselves and he laid him on his head, on his forehead. Jabin, forehead. On his cheek, on his forehead. So he put him in a way that Ismail alayhi salatu wa as Imam Kathir rahimahullah narrates in al-bidayah wa al-nihayah, Ismail alayhi salam said to him, Dad, when you are about to slaughter me, don't lay me down on with my face upward because you may have little mercy for me at that time and you may stop doing what Allah ordered you to do and therefore lay me upside down so you won't be able to see my face when you're doing it and you will fulfill the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is, this, this is what the young boy is telling his father. Sadiq al wahd Made a promise, fulfilling his promise. Did not move at all. Did not make any complaint. Did not ask for anything else. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself sent a lamb from the Jannah to be slaughtered on behalf of Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam. So this is Sadiq al wahd a very special level of Sadiq al wahd from childhood. وَكَانَ رَسُولَ النَّبِيَّةِ And he was a messenger, he was a prophet, he was a messenger and a prophet. وَكَانَ يَأْمُرُ أَهْلَهُ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَالزَّكَاةِ Another very special quality of Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam. And mentioned so that we will follow these and be alayhi salatu wasalam in these things. وَكَانَ يَأْمُرُ أَهْلَهُ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَالزَّكَاةِ He used to enjoin salah and zakah on his family. He used to order his family to do the salahs, to establish the salah and pay the zakah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he received the prophethood. The first order Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about preaching deen was given وَأَنذِرْ عَشِيرَتَكَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ And warn your close relatives. So this is where deen starts from. As a well-known saying, charity begins home. Most of the time we find ourselves when we come to the masjid, and we are discussing the affairs of the masjid, everyone would like to talk about it. Yes, this is what we should do. And salah should be on time, and on this time, and we should have it open like this. And we go home, and we never talk about salah anymore. A salah was only for the people of the masjid. <clears throat> we will be very happy, and all of us will gladly accept the position of being the president of the masjid. And this president of the masjid may be sleeping at the time of Fajr. And then we will come to the masjid and give lectures and talk about salah, about functions of the masjid, about how to establish the masjid. And if you hear and we hear these things, you can see, you think that this person, no one has more worry about deen than this person, goes back home and children are sleeping, doesn't care about them. We don't bother to wake them up. We go back home, it's time for Isha, and he's sleeping, she is sleeping. What happened? You ask your wife, what happened? They were not feeling well today. Okay, if that was the reason, okay, let them have some rest. Subhanallah, <coughs> rest and no salah. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying about Ismail alayhi salam. وَكَانَ يَأْمُرُ أَهْلَهُ بِالصَّلَاةِ He used to order his family to do the salah. For those of us who have some importance of these orders of deen and the ibadah, so we'll enjoin these ibadahs on them that you have to do the salah. You have to fast. You must fast. 
when it comes to the ibadahs that are performed through the wealth, where there is spending, then we'll say, you know, there is a lot of need, and if he doesn't do it, uh, he really needs his money. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically mentioned was zakah. Although he, of course, salah and zakah means all the other ibadahs also. It's not that he was neglecting the others, but these are the first step towards these two directions. Ibadah that is performed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through our body and ibadah that is performed with our wealth. So Ismail alayhi salatu wassalam, he would always remind his family of salah and zakah. Of course, all the Anbi alayhi salatu wassalam were doing it. And not only Anbi alayhi salatu wassalam, even the followers of Anbi would do it. But how many of us will have this quality that every time we go home, we make sure that we know everyone really have done the salah. Every year we are sure that everyone have paid the zakah. It's not weird that we assume it. We know that this is happening. We know it is a fact that all of our children at home, they never miss the salah. They are doing the prayers on time. We keep on reminding them about salah. We keep on talking to them about the importance of salah. How many ahadith of salah we have discussed with our families? How many ayahs of salah have we discussed with our families? <coughs> so this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us وَكَانَ يَأْمُرُ أَهْلَهُ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَالزَّكَاهِ وَكَانَ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِ مَرْضِيَا And he was dear to his Lord. The word مَرْضِيَا is a very special word used for Ismail alayhi salatu wassalam. You know what this مَرْضِي means? Yes, we will translate it as the one that was dear to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. with whom Allah was pleased. But what is the explanation of this? In simple words, it means that he was as Allah wanted him to be. He was as Allah wanted him to be. And this is why he, Allah was very pleased with him. And this should be really our dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Ya Allah make us the way you like us to be. And then we submit ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fulfill the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do everything the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. So that we would be mardi, we will be pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we are doing what Allah wants us to do and we are doing the way Allah wants us to do. It's, as I said, very special quality and for us at least the more we try to get closer to this, to be mardi in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will look at the servant, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with him, that he is doing what I wanted him to do at this time. He is doing the way I wanted him to do this action. This is of course, when we get to a very special level of ikhlas. Wadkur fil kitabi Idris. And mention in the book the story of Idris alayhi salatu was salam. Innahu kana siddiqan nabiyya. Indeed, he was a siddiq and he was a prophet. Again, the quality of siddiq is mentioned for Idris alayhi salatu was salam. The same quality that was mentioned for Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. So to tell us that even Idris alayhi salatu was salam was on a very high level of as siddiqeen Sayyidina, Ibrahim, Sayyidina Idris alayhi salatu was salam, when was he? This is a big question in the history because none of the ahadiths talk clearly about the time period of Idris alayhi salatu was salam. Many times when we don't have a hadith talking about Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam, you would find some indications and it's, there are stories in Bible because normally all these are books, uh, all the books talk about the same uh, prophets. 
these stories may be different. They may associate different things with these Anbiya alayhim salatu wasalam. But at least their names are there and their, some of their stories are there that will indicate of their time period when these prophets were there. Idris alayhi salam, either his name is not mentioned, either he is not mentioned in the Torah or in Injil at all, which means at least the present books that they have in that whatever form, either he's not mentioned there at all, or some of the scholars are of the opinion that there is a name in the Bible, Hanuk. And they think that Hanuk may be the same person that we call him Idris. Wallahu alam. This was just a piece of information that it may be the same one that with a different name over there. Anyway, even if the mention was there, we won't know too much about him because those are sources like history and historians are already differing about the time period when Sayyidina Idris alayhi salam was there. Most of them are of the opinion that he was after Adam alayhi salam before Nuh alayhi salatu was salam. There is a weak hadith, not an authentic one, a weak hadith in Mustadrak Hakim that Sayyidina Idris alayhi salatu was salam was about thousand years before Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu was salam. Wallahu alam. There are some very special things with Idris alayhi salatu was salam as we find in the tafasir that he was the first person to sew the clothings. Before him, people would always use the skins of animals as clothing, but he is the one who started using these type of normal clothes, garment. Sayyidina Idris alayhi salatu was salam is the first person who started using, who uh, invented the ink and started uh, in, uh, writing with pen and, uh, uh, and using, using the ink. So according to histories, he was the first person who, would, who, who started writing. Also, according to the histories, Sayyidina Idris alayhi salatu was salam was the first person who invented the tools of measuring things. So all different now, of course, they have advanced and we have different ways of measuring things. But Sayyidina Idris alayhi salatu was salam was the first person who invented these type of tools where they could measure different type of things and weigh things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran says about Idris alayhi salatu was salam وَرَفَعْنَاهُ مَكَانًا And we raised him to a high place. What is that? It was a very special quality again that Idris alayhi salatu was salam was blessed with. That he was very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and accordingly. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he talked about his incident of Isra and Mi'raj. He said he met Sayyidina Ibra Idris alayhi salatu was salam on the fourth heaven. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him that very special position over there. That there are only eight Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam over there. On seven heavens. There are eight Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam. And on the fourth heaven is Sayyidina Idris alayhi salatu was salam. There are many stories associated with Idris alayhi salatu was salam being on the heaven. But they are all Israeliyat. You know what does Israeliyat mean? Yeah. Stories narrated from Bani Israel. Bani Israel are narrating those stories. What is the hukum for us? La nusaddiqu wa la nukadhib. That we say, Wallahu alam, we don't know if it is true or not. As far as narrating, it is allowed to narrate them as a story. <coughs> Making sure that we don't narrate it as a hadith or we don't associate that with the ayahs of Al Quran and call it the tafsir of the ayah. <coughs> yes, we can narrate it as a story. And as I said, there are many stories related to Idris alayhi salatu was salam and especially of this quality, of this uh, unique quality of, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about him. Rafa'nahu makanan aliyah. As an example, I will mention one of them so that we know what they are 
And we also would know then that this is from Israeliyat, is not from Hadith and is not in Quran. It says that Sayyidina Idris alayhi salatu was salam. He was very close to one of the angels. And Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam, they talk to angels, angels come to them. He was very close to one of them. So one day he said to that angel, I would like you to ask the angel of death to prolong my time because I like to do more ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said, I'm sure he won't do it, but because you asked me, I will still talk to him. So he went and talked to him. So he said, that's not possible. So Idris alayhi salam said, let me just talk to him sometime. Let me talk to him. So when Idris alayhi salat was, uh, that angel said, okay. And he talked to the angel of death and he took, took him up to the heaven. <coughs> when he went up there, he said to him, then I have one question for you. Idris alayhi salam says to him, I have one question for you. He said, what? He said, if you tell me the time of my death, he said, normally, I find that out only at the time of person's death. Although he has the whole list of the year, but I look at it and I keep on knowing it at that time, exact time, and I just keep on doing it, doing my work. But for you, let me check it. And he checks and he says, your time is right now. And he says, to my surprise, if you were not, if I wasn't talking to you, I would have been totally confused because Allah even tells me where to take this person's life out and his soul out of his body out and about you. It says on the heaven, I would have thought, how would you come on the heaven? But here I find you over here. And he takes his soul out. So this is what they associate as that he had a very high status, that he went up and died. Wallahu alam as I said, keep in mind, Israeliyat. Stories from Bani Israel. Not necessary that this will be how Allah exalted him to a higher status. And normally in Quran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses this terminology, this word, makanan aliya rafa'nahu, that it means that very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even if a person won't die over there, still he can be very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have a very strong relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After mentioning these some very unique and special qualities of these Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now is mentioning all of them together by saying, أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ these are the people whom Allah have blessed with His bounties. <coughs> These are the prophets from the progeny of Adam alayhi salatu wassalam. They are the descendants of Sayyidina Adam alayhi salatu wassalam. وَمِمَّنْ حَمَلْنَا مَعَ And from those whom we boarded with Nuh alayhi salatu wassalam. وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّةِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْرَائِيلِ and from the progeny of Ibrahim and Israel. And from those whom we guided and selected. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned few things about these Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam here. Let us go by them, through them one by one. These are the ones Allah says, Anamullahu alayhim. I favored them with special blessings. Nabiyyin min al-Nabiyyin min dhurriyati Adam The prophets from the progeny of Adam alayhi salatu wassalam This first word shows us that having being born to virtue as parents is a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a great blessing for children to have virtue as parents This is why Allah is especially mentioning that these are the children of Adam alayhi salam associating them to a great prophet of Allah a one that was chosen chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So this is why Allah is saying min an nabiyyin min dhurriyati Adam 
they are from the progeny of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. So having been from the family of virtuous people, it's a blessing, blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now we may think of ourselves that, okay, what can we do if our parents are not doing certain things right? Remember, after all, we will be parents to some others also. So we can provide our children with the right parents. If we be the right people, then inshallah our children will benefit from that. This is what the message is for us. That be the right people and be the right parents for your children. So that your children will benefit from your ikhlas, from your amal, from your iman. And they really do benefit. <coughs> Just like a person who will use good perfume. All the people around him will smell it, will smell the fragrance. And a person who is applying some bad stinking chemicals on his body, on his cloth, people around him will be able to smell that also. So people around are benefiting or being harmed from what this person is doing. And there are many hadiths to this effect where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, and Imam Qurtubi rahimahullah have narrated many of these hadiths. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna allaha la yusliha bi salah al-rajul ahluh wa jirana wa ahlu duwayratin hawla. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of one virtuous person being in a house, Allah fixes the situation of his family members, which means help his family members in a lot of things. And his neighbors also get blessed because of that person being next to them and a lot of people around in the neighborhood a lot of people in the neighborhood they get the benefit of having that one virtuous person around them in the in, in the neighborhood in the community in other hadith rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said when there is a virtuous person through his virtuousness allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses his children grandchildren and great grandchildren up to three generations, people will benefit because one person, their great-grandfather, was a virtuous man. This is the effect of Amal al-Salih. The effect is there. Just like, for example, when the hadith says that a person will recite Surah Al-Baqarah at his home, shaitan will be out of the house, so all the people are benefiting. This is when one person is reciting Surah Al-Baqarah. Imagine when one person is continuously is in that zuhud, that ibadah, that taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so of course people will benefit. <coughs> If this worldly perfume can really help one person using it and others are benefiting from it, why not the Iman and Amal Saliha, which are better perfumes than these ones and have greater and most and much better effect than just the perfumes made by human beings? So, this is one thing that Allah mentioned Min Dhuriyati Adam. They are from the progeny of Adam alayhi salam, so this is one good thing for them. Another thing, وَمِمَّنْ حَمَلْنَا مَعَنُوا And are of those that we carried and we boarded with the Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam in the ship of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. So now, being around the virtuous people is also beneficial. This is what Allah is saying, حَمَلْنَا مَعَنُوا The ones that we carried with Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. So, it's a virtue for them to be the children of those that were with Nuh alayhi salam, which means those were the ones that were saved from the adab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are thousand students writing the exam. And very few of them, say about six or seven of them, they pass the exam. Everyone will be asking in the graduation, which are the ones that have passed the exam? Only seven out of thousand. We heard these are very intelligent people. So, hundreds of thousands of people around Nuh alayhi salatu was salam and very few that were saved. So it was a very unique quality and very and a great blessing for them. So this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and out of those that we aborted with Nuh alayhi salatu was salam. وَمِمَّنْ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّةِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْرَائِيلِ And from the 
progeny of Ibrahim and Israel. Israel is the name of Yaqub alayhi salatu wasalam. Again, indicating to the very same thing that having more virtuous people in the community, they had Adam alayhi salam, then they have Ibrahim alayhi salam, then they have Yaqub alayhi salam. So it's a great blessing of Allah that they have so many great people in their families. The common thing of these Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam was very special thing now that Allah is mentioning where he's ending this topic of these qualities of Anbiya alayhi salam with the statement is the closing statement and you can imagine how important that is إِذَا تُتْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُ الرَّحْمَانِ خَرُّوا سُجَّدًا وَبُكِيَا the common thing of all of these Anbiya very important loved quality by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was Whenever the ayahs of Rahman subhanahu wa ta'ala are recited before them, they fall down in prostration, weeping. They go into the sujood, crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mufassirin have explained this ayah in different ways. And normally, mostly, all the Mufassirin have explained it as that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that these Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam were after all human beings don't worship them. They used to do sajda to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But really, I would like to say instead of that, Allah is mentioning the highest quality of these Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam and that is their ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the better abid, the more the person is doing the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the closer that person is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is the purpose of our existence. So the more ibadah, better ibadah, the closer the person will be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah is saying that these anbiya were very close to me when they used to hear my ayahs they would not be able to control their emotions and they would just go down in sujood crying before me, remembering me and crying before me. Children who may be far from their parents. A wife who have been kept away from her husband for a long time. All of a sudden someone goes and starts talking about her husband you will see the tears falling of her eyes. Children who have been far from their parents, and they always remember them, you go and talk to them about their parents, you will see tears falling of their eyes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Anbiya alayhim as salatu was salam, when they hear my ayahs, you see the tears falling of their eyes. Now I think we can understand this ayah, kharru sujjadan wa bukiyah. This is talking about their feelings. Their feelings do not allow them just to be doing whatever they have been doing and they don't even know what's, what's being talked about when the ayahs of Allah are being recited to them. Their love to Allah is such that they can't help it anymore. They fall down in sujood, praying to Allah and crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was the situation of these Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam. Of course, it's something that we need to recite it over and over now and try to adopt these qualities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have talked about. Try to get as close as we can because Allah is admiring them for it. If we try to follow these steps and these things and adopt these qualities, we will also get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These were the Anbiya alayhi wa salatu wa salam. Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam, they were of these such high levels. So of course people around them benefited from them. They learned the deen, some of course rejected, but now we are talking about the ones that benefited from Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam. <coughs> they started following the steps of Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam. They followed <laughs> the directions given by Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam. What happened to those people now? Where are those people? Sayyidina Musa salatu was salam, he had good followers who really followed him good. They tried their best to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sayyidina Isa salatu was salam, he had good followers. 
all the Anbiya alayhi wasalam, and you name the Anbiya alayhi wasalatu wasalam, they had some good followers. So what happened about th- to those people then? This is what Allah explains in the next ayah. فَخَلَفَ مِن بَعْدِهِمْ خَلْفٌ أَضَاعُ الصَّلَةِ A generation came after them, they started missing their prayers. The first generations, they were following Anbiya Ali Musallatu Wasallam. Where did the problem start from? The first problem came into all of these ummas. And Allah is telling us, so that we know that we will be facing, and the problem in this ummah will start from the very same direction. We will be attacked from the very same direction. And that would be Ada'u salah missing the salah. Allah says that Iman continued. The teachings of Anbiya Ali Musalam continued until the generations came who did not want to perform salah, who were missing their salah. Ada'u salah means they missed their prayers. And Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu says, that the word Adaw Salah here means that they were delaying the Salah from its proper time. It's not that they were totally missing the Salah. They were delaying the Salah from its proper time. So doing Zuhr at the time of Asr, doing Asr at the time of Maghrib, doing Maghrib later after the time of Isha or Istat. So they are missing the Salah from their proper timings. This was the first problem how Ummah started falling off Surat Al-Mustaqeem. How clearly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to us. And how blindly we are turning away from these and asking the whole world that how can we the Muslims be successful in the world? Can you tell us something? Can you help us? Can you do something for us that we Muslims are really f- facing all of this humiliation and this is what's happening to us? Allah is telling us, is nothing in anyone else's hand. I have given you your deen, and the most important thing was the salah. When you missed it, I took everything away from you. Very clear. فَخَلَفَ مِن بَعْدِهِمْ خَلْفٌ أَضَاعُ الصَّلَةِ A generation came after them who started missing their prayer. So you can see that this ayah is telling us, first step, first step towards fitna and falling of surat al-mustaqeem is missing the salah. What will follow? What will happen after that? Once we miss the salah, what will happen next? Now people will start following their desires. When people don't perform the salah, they have no control over their desires. There are so many ayahs that talk about this fact. If we start going through those ayahs, we won't be able to continue with these ayahs here. But look in Surah Al-Ma'arij, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he mentions human beings being very impatient, not having any control over themselves. إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ خُلِقَ هَلُوعًا إِذَا مَسَّهُ الشَّرُّ جَزُوعًا وَإِذَا مَسَّهُ الْخَيْرُ مَنُوعًا Human beings are created very impatient. When they have a hardship, they keep on complaining. And when they get any benefit, they like to hold it to themselves. They don't like to share it. And problems, they like to hold it, uh, put it on uh, other shoulders and like to share their problems only with others. You tell a person, how are you today? And he says, oh, you don't know, you know, so many problems. You know, I have this, I have this. And after some time, this person's business is going well. You ask him, how is the business going? You know, yeah, you know, there are a lot of commitments and things. Trying, trying hard. And now he, he won't talk about the millions that he's hiding in his account. Illa al Except for those who perform the prayers. Alladheena hum ala salatihim da'imoon. Not every musalli, not everyone who does the prayer. Alladheena hum ala salatihim da'imoon. Those who are punctual in doing their prayers. Ala salatihim da'imoon. Qad aflah al mu'minoon. Those mu'mineen will be successful. الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Who can concentrate in their salah. On the other hand, فَوَيْلٌ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ Who to those who perform the prayers? الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ Those who are heedless to their prayers. And keep on reading the ayahs of the Quran. 
nothing is more important than this and hardly you would find a family where all the people in the family are very punctual on their prayers we are not saying hardly you would find a country or a town hardly you would find a family where people are punctual in their prayers and they don't miss the salah they don't delay the salah from its proper time where are those families how many families can we have like those or do we have like those simply means we are falling and we fall off salat al mustaqim we need to come back come back is we need to establish this again facts see how quran talks about facts and then we are looking for answers from everywhere else we read so many books newspapers internet reading articles that person said this the other person said this and those people said we will do this forget about everything that they said they would do the real doer is there he is the one who's doing it and he's telling us how he does things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he tells us his rules and he is ahkam al hakimin he rules every ruler in the world he rules everything in the world no one can rule Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these are his rules those of us who have concern about all the situation and everything goes we'll read this we'll go back and still we'll be sleeping on it so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us the first step how people started falling of Surat al-Mustaqeem we are looking for help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for honor respect dignity because on the uh, basis of our iman and if Allah is not approving that iman then what is it that we are asking him for on the basis of what now that was our base iman faith and Allah is saying that nations before you they were destroyed because of missing their salah and same will happen to you if you miss your salah will take you off too This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةِ وَلَا تَكُونُوا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ Establish the salah and do not be of the mushrikeen. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says clearly in the hadith that the thing that holds a mu'min into his iman is salah فَمَنْ تَرَكَهَا فَقَدْ كَفَرْ A person who would miss, start missing the salah gradually he will fall into kufr. So, the first step is salah and the second step is following the desires when people start following desires now these desires can make people do anything desires will make the person if the person really cannot control his desires then desires will make the person do the worst thing that he could never imagine doing in his life but that is because of not having control over ourselves we cannot control our desires <coughs> stuff for Allah, stuff for Allah, I won't do this I won't listen to songs anymore now after some time the person ends up seeing listening to the song for an hour for hours what happened he heard few words and then he couldn't help it and he continued the main key to that is because of not doing the salah properly if we would do it, inshallah, we'll have control over our souls. And same with all other sins. So, this is the first step. فَخَلَفَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ خَلْفْ أَضَعُوا الصَّلَاةِ A generation came after them that started missing the salah. Love the word khalf here is used. Khalf with the sukoon on the lamb means a bad generation. People who would do evil. A generation that will go off the track. And if the very same word is used with fatha on the lamb, khalaf, it means good successors, good generation. So khalaf with the fatha on the lamb means good people, and with the sukun on the lamb means bad people, remember. So fa khalaf, I mean ba'dim khalf. The word khalf is used with sukun, which means they had bad people after them who were missing the salah. وَاتَّبَعُوا الشَّهَوَاتِ 
and they were following their desires فَسَوْفَ يَلْقَوْنَ غَيَّا Soon they will be facing destruction. The word غَيْ means destruction and at the same time as Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhum have explained that it's a special place in Jahannam. It's a place in Jahannam that is called غَيْ. It's such a place that the hellfire rest of the Jahannam seeks Allah's refuge against it and says, Ya Allah, just protect me, keep that place away from me. This is how bad that place is. So that will be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who start doing this, who will start falling off the Surat al-Mustaqeem by missing the Salah and by following their desires, they are the ones that will be thrown in that place, in that location of the Jahannam, which is called Ghayy. May Allah protect us of me from those. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep all of us in Surat al-Mustaqeem, protect us from falling of the Surat of the Deen, the way others fell before us and the other nations fell of the Surat before us. And may Allah give us tawfiq to do the things that will keep us on the Surat al-Mustaqeem. May Allah give us tawfiq to follow the steps of these Anbiya alayhi salatu wassalam and adopt these very special qualities and please follow these very special qualities of Anbiya alayhi salatu wassalam. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfiru Allah li wa lakum wa lisa'il al-muslimina wal-muslimat wa akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillah.